Hi, I'm Cassie and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make Japanese gyudon. Gyudon is a simple dish and gyu means beef and don comes from donburi which means rice. So in the simplest of terms it's beef on rice. Other than the rice which can just be put in a rice cooker, the simplest version of this dish only needs to take about 15 minutes or less and the only thing that you need to chop up is onions. So I'm going to show you the quickest, simplest, traditional version of this recipe but I'll also be showing you a different version with some western flavours in there which will hopefully bring out the meatiness and some of the richness of the dish. I want to keep this as gyudon-y as possible so we're not going to go crazy, the cooking process is going to be fairly similar but the preparation will just be a little bit different. One of the reasons that I do these kind of western some flavor experiments is to show you that Japanese cooking isn't this inaccessible weird thing where you need crazy ingredients and crazy cooking techniques and basically I just don't want to be giving you any excuses to not be making Japanese food and experimenting for yourself. So let's stop making excuses and see how it's done. For the traditional gyudon, the main ingredients that need any kind of preparation are the beef and onion. Everything else can just be poured into a jug to make a sauce. However, for the red wine gyudon, we're going to be adding some mushrooms, ginger and garlic, which will need some cutting preparation. So let's start off with the traditional gyudon. First, we're going to start off by rinsing our short grain rice. Each of our gyudon recipes is going to yield about two servings, so I'm going to do four cups of rice and set it in the rice cooker. Then we're going to grab our onion. You don't need to use a full onion. Half an onion will do just fine if you prefer. Then we're going to cut it in half and chop off the ends before peeling it. Then we're just going to slice it to a medium thickness. This is the only vegetable that we're putting in here, so we want some of the texture to remain intact. So for our traditional gyudon sauce, we're going to start with 200 milliliters of water and eight grams of dashi, to which we'll add three tablespoons of sake, Realize that everyone can see you in the spoon and give a little wave. Three tablespoons of mirin and four tablespoons of soy sauce. Then we'll mix with a spoon to combine. Then we're going to get three tablespoons of sugar ready and somehow manage to spill it all over the countertop. Then we want to get 250 grams of finely cut beef. Seeing as we only have two fresh ingredients in this meal, then I would recommend getting high quality beef. And for this we can use chuck beef. And I'm just coating it in potato starch so that we can keep the meaty flavors intact and it will make the sauce slightly thicker. So as you can see, there's minimal preparation that is required and all we had to do was chop up the onions. I am however lucky enough that I live in Japan and I can go to the supermarket and buy the pre-cut beef. So if you want to find out how to cut the beef, then leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Next, get your pan and we're just going to combine the sauce and the sugar in the pan. Leave it on a medium heat and give it a quick stir to check that all of the sugar has dissolved. As soon as all the sugar has dissolved and before it starts bubbling, let's add all of our onion slices. Then we want to just leave that on a medium heat and give it an occasional stir to make sure that all of the slices are getting enough love. The Japanese beef bowl is truly a simple dinner recipe because this is one of the only two steps to cooking gyudon. Oh guys, I wish you could smell this right now. It just smells so Japanese. And once our onions have softened and started to get a nice brown color and the sauce is starting to bubble, it's time to add our beef. Just plop everything in and make sure that each slice is separated. Once everything has started to brown on the bottom, this will be about one to two minutes on medium heat. Then just give it a quick stir so that the other side can get brown too. Don't leave this on for too long because the thinly sliced meat will not take long to cook at all. Then get your freshly cooked steaming white rice and just place it on top. 
And there you have it, a super simple but super tasty gyudon dinner. Then you can just add a bit of beni shoga and maybe some spices and savor those meaty flavors. Especially with the dashi, the flavors are distinctly Japanese and this is a wonderfully meaty dish. But how can we kick it up a notch? So if you've already learned something here, then give me a thumbs up and let's get out the red wine. So we're not just going to replace the sake with red wine, we're going to add in a few complementary flavors, starting with eringi mushrooms. I have to say, these mushrooms were probably my favorite part of this dish. They just soaked up the red wine sauce beautifully. They're so good that I think you could probably make a vegetarian version of this dish just with the mushrooms. I didn't wash these, I just brushed them to make sure that they were clean so that they would absorb as much of the sauce as possible. Then we're going to cut them fairly thickly and make them as long as possible. Next, in place of beni shoga, we're going to use some fresh ginger. And I'm using a teaspoon to peel off the outer layer. Then I'm just going to julienne the ginger, meaning cutting them into very fine strips. Then grab your garlic cloves. And, uh, oh, that wasn't quite as cinematic as I had hoped. Let's just uh, put these back together, yeah. Then again, peel off the outer layer and we're just going to give it a quick crush. For this, I really wanted to bring out the garlic flavors, so I crushed four garlics and then minced another two. When I slice garlic, I tend to just slice it down one way, then slice it down the other, and then you can just mince it quite easily. But it still takes a little bit of time, so for the last two, let's just... Yeah, that was a lot easier. If you're enjoying this so far and you're thinking of making either of these recipes, then don't forget to click subscribe so that I can keep experimenting and showing you all this good stuff. Now for the red wine sauce. Into our measuring jug goes our chicken stock cube and 150 milliliters of water. Then add 50 milliliters of red wine, to which we will add three tablespoons of soy sauce and prepare two tablespoons of sugar. This time for more of a Western fusion vibe, we're going to season our beef with salt and pepper and dust it with flour instead of potato starch. Then to our pan, we're going to add our sauce and sugar again but this time we're going to add some things, namely a teaspoon of oregano, a sprig or two of rosemary, and our ginger and garlic. Then once the sugar has dissolved again, we'll add all of our onions. Doesn't this already sound amazing? Then we're going to let it get bubbly. Then, when our onions have softened a bit but haven't fully browned, we're going to add our ringi mushrooms. I like the mushrooms to still have a bit of spring to them, so we're adding them after the onions. Then we're going to add all of our meat, once again making sure that it's not stuck together. Let that boil and bubble for about a minute or two, then give it a stir so that we can get the other side done. I think the mushrooms are actually my favorite part of this dish. They just soak up all the flavors of everything. I would really recommend putting them into basically any gudon that you make. So I added a little bit of water which was misguided and I had to add a little bit more flour later to thicken up the sauce. However, this is unnecessary for you guys if you followed the outlines and measurements that I've given you. Now it's time to plate up our red wine gudon. Admittedly, this is not the most beautiful dish, but trust me, it tastes amazing. And of course, seeing as we have the all-important red wine, let's pour ourselves a glass and give it a taste. The red wine really brings out the meaty flavors, but it still tastes distinctly like gyudon. You guys better make this because it tastes so good. This is definitely my new go-to dinner recipe. If you make either of these recipes, then don't forget to tag me on Instagram at in Cassie's Kitchen. Otherwise, that's it for today, so check back next Sunday for more Japanese recipes. See you next time.